Hi, I'm Harper. I'm from Brev.dev and today we're going to go over OCR, Optical Character Recognition, and how you can use it with open source tools. And we're also going to use Amazon's Mistral Lite, which is their 32,000 context length version of Mistral. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a PDF or a directory of PDFs, run OCR on it using an open source library, and then we can query asking questions for it using this extremely long context length by Amazon, their, Amazon, their version of Mr. Light. It's really good at content retrieval based on information that is within the context length. So that's what it's been fine-tuned on and they've shown that it performs really well. I'm excited to do this together and let's just walk through it. Okay, so we're gonna start in the notebook and I will link the notebook in the video description below and it's on our GitHub page and it's just gonna walk you through everything you need to do. And so what we're gonna do here is just walk through it together. So we're gonna download this and then we're gonna come down here and click deploy now. So this will connect you with a GPU that is already preloaded with all the specs that you need. It's about $1.50 an hour and you are welcome to use a different GPU and upload this on a CoLab uh, notebook, but this has everything you need and um, you won't run out of memory. Some of the issues with the Colab GPUs and not Brev is that you might hit out of memory limits. So um, this is all set for you. And so you can just press deploy. Um, make sure you have a card connected. I do, so I'm just gonna reload it. I think it didn't load my information. Good to go. And this is gonna deploy. So we'll give it a few minutes and then it will go to the page. Let's see, we have the notebook here and it has a preset Python version, a preset CUDA version. And then once we get to the deploy page, I will build the verb container, which is a container on the GPU that has all of the requirements that you need. And it's a little environment with everything you need to run the notebook. So see, this, these are preset for you and you can just click build. And so you're gonna have to give this some time. Um, right now it could take about 20 minutes. We're working on making it shorter um, and just come back in a little bit, but you will see a kind of mini terminal, mini shell show up here and um, it'll say when it's done, but we'll be there together. So we'll come back in a minute. Okay, so we can see the instance is configured here. It says your verb container is ready. So now we just wanna open an iTerm which I have open here. You can also open terminal and we'll say brev open or actually brev notebook. Oh wait, the notebook button is working. Let's see if it works. Oh yay. Okay. So you can just click the notebook button, but if it's not working, if it doesn't show up, you can just say brev notebook and then the name of the machine. And then it'll give you a link here to um, you can command click and, or just copy and paste it into your browser. And, um, you should be good to go. So here we just click the notebook button and now let's just upload the chatbot notebook and we're just going to run these cells. So we have the GPU already. We're going to do shift enter to install the necessary requirements. And then we go over everything. So in the next section, we'll use OCR. And then this links to some information about OCR to extract text from our PDF. And so what OCR is, it's optical character recognition. And so given an image, it's able to extract characters from that image and turn it into a text format. And we're gonna be using PD3F, which is an open source tool. So this code that I've pre-written for you should basically do everything for you. So let's just give this a minute. If the asterisk is there, that means it's still running. Um, and if it turns into a number, that's me that means it has completed. So we can just run this too, and it'll wait in the queue to run after this one is done. Um, and this will install Docker Compose and PD3F, so the um, libraries that we need to get this working. So I'll be right back when it's done. Okay, and so now we want to use the PD3F API. And so here is an example of the code API, and here are some of the other parameters that you can use when querying it. And you would put those parameters 
basically right here. So here it says data equals lang. So that's one of the parameters and you could add like, for example, you know, fast, true. Or is it true? Yeah. So yeah, you could add parameters here to this data portion data map. And so what we're going to do is run. Um, first, we have to gather the PDFs. And so what you'll want to do is put it into a directory and you can create a directory using this and then load them, upload your files. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to git clone my example, which you are welcome to use. Um, and what we're going to do here is we're first going to load the PDFs using OCR. So transform these PDFs into a series of text. And then we're going to put that into the Mistral Lite context window. So again, the Mistral Lite model allows for a context window of 32,000 tokens. However, you know, it should be considered that as the information in the context window gets longer, the model does tend to degrade in performance on items earlier in the context window. And so you should keep that in mind. So it has a long context window, but you shouldn't expect it to, you know, perform perfectly if you're filling up the context window to the full or even halfway um, length, but it's something fun to experiment with and to try out. And so what we're going to load into this context window is the PDF, the instructions. So answer the following questions by referring to the data below. So we'll say this and then it'll refer to the data and then it'll say, um, a chat history. You could optionally add chat history so that there's some continuity in how the model is responding. And so, you know, you could say, um, what do you think about, you know, uh, like ask a question about it and say, you know, what do you think about that? And if you have the chat history, then the model will know that that refers to the thing that was right before. So if that makes sense, great. Um, okay, cool. So we've run these. We're getting, we're loading the um, objects in this OCR example directory. And so you could change this directory name to whatever it is for you. Um, this will load every item. I just have one. And it's my <laughs> essay that I wrote about Kylie Jenner when I was a sophomore in college. So I took a class on, um, what was it, icons? And I wrote about this was in 2016, how I thought she would be the most successful Kardashian. And I was right. And I'm not really a big Kardashian fan at all, but um, I had to study fame for my class and I thought it was really interesting. So cool. And so here's the code. We're going to run this. Uh, let's see what's wrong. What is wrong? Oh, I think there's an issue with the ports. Let's see what's going on on this port. Yeah, it's not working. So we want to go back. Ah. I want to go to our, I don't know how to go back, honestly, and using arc. So we're just going to go back to the console. I got to get better at using arc is this um, browser that I'm using right now. Natter introduced it to me. Natter is the CEO of Rev and also my dear friend. Okay. So let's see. Oh, we forgot to run this. That's why I didn't go in order. So we want to open a terminal by clicking here, run that command that I pasted there. Wait until you see something like this. So let's go back and say sleep, find OCR name. Let's see. So it's going to download. Let's wait a minute. Okay, so here we go. So it's working. Let's try it again. We, I don't think we need to rerun these. And cool. It's loading. We're not getting that error. And we'll give it a minute. And again, it's looking at this directory and it's going to load all the PDFs in this directory and it's extracting the text from this. So there are images here too. So now we have the text. This is the same text that I showed you when we were extracted. So now we want to load the model. 
So we're going to load it in 4-bit quantization. I explained what quantization is. It is when you are mapping a 16-bit or 32-bit version of the floating points that represent the model's weights into a 4-bit fixed representation of the model. So it's about 1 4th or 1 8th the size. And so you're able to uh, fix representation of the floating point. So um, it is able to represent this long floating point in a much smaller 4-bit um, fixed representation. And so, again, this is obviously reducing the model size, the amount of bits you need to store the model. It is lossy, but that can actually be good in some cases um, in terms of like reducing overfitting and allowing for regularization. So, so yeah, here we're gonna load it in 4-bit, which is a form of quantization. And this will take a minute. Okay, so this is loaded. And now we can run the next one. So this is going to get our prompt ready. So we'll be inserting the text from our entire PDF into the prompt. And we're going to cut out the work cited portion here. And I added this. So the code below removes everything after work cited. If term equals true. So you could remove this. Maybe it says references, or maybe you just don't even want it, or it's just set false. Um, and obviously, if you don't have a work cited section, this won't do anything because it looks for that string. And then I'm going to add this prompt. So this is my task. You can edit this to be what you want your task to be. Provide details answer, detailed answers to questions provided about the following essay, referencing the essay itself. So if you have a different task, different PDFs, um, fill this in, be descriptive. The more descriptive you are, the better. And so then we're going to tokenize this input, which is uh, this prompt which has the task, then the essay, and then just lines to show the model that it's separated now. So now let's just print this. The initial prompt and essay is 5,300 tokens. So again, it'll take 32,000 with expected um, degradation in performance over time. So we're gonna add the stopping criteria list, which will prevent the model from producing new questions and answers. And so once it produces the word question again, it will stop. And so this code is potentially useful for other projects that you have where you find the model continues to output new questions and then answering answer its own questions. And so here's this code. We can just run this. Here's the chatbot loop. So this loop takes in the user's question, um, places the question as the prefix and answer as the suffix and then tokenizes that string to memory so it doesn't tokenize everything over and over again. And then it appends this new tokenization onto the most recent tokenization. So this is a way that we can just be very memory efficient with our tokenization. These are all true. They're very specific. It references certain parts of the essay. Let's, let's find one like Here's where I noticed that the model is actually not producing any output, and so I try to debug it. I think maybe the issue is that it's appending on, so once it answered nothing, now it's learning to answer nothing. So here I am just validating that hypothesis, and I was able to do so, and so what I did instead was to reset the model input at the beginning. I think this should fix it. So I think the issue is that it learned that like there was a, it messed up and it learned that an appropriate answer was just nothing. See? And then it just kept doing that. So let's just start over. Let's refresh. And let's try it again. Okay, so we can run these. And then what specific incidents helped propel Kylie to fame? And then it's going to reference the RBA. Cool, so we just ask it questions and then when we're done, we can say stop and it worked. So I hope you like going through this with me. I think the stopping criteria list will be useful um, for anyone if they're running into this kind of repetition issue and you know creation of new questions issue run on. Using open source OCR, 
it was cool and exciting. I love the open source community. It's pretty amazing what these, you know, free contributions that people are making to the world. So thanks to the PD3F team. And um, I hope this was helpful. So yeah, subscribe if you're interested. I do a lot of AI ML content and I look forward to connecting with you. Just a reminder, when you're done, make sure that you go ahead and delete your instance. I just did that now. If you delete it, you'll lose all of this information that you had stored on the device, um, but you will stop paying for it. If you decide to stop the device, we will store all of the data that you had on the device for a couple cents an hour, a fraction of a few cents an hour, but then you'll be able to just restart your instance and have everything ready to go and you won't have to set everything up. And so you can look at pricing on brev.dev slash pricing and this will outline everything for you. So on disk, it's this much per gigabyte per hour for the lifetime of the instance. And you can see the gigabyte usage here. So it's that number times 256 per hour is what you would be charged to keep the instance stopped. Well, I hope this was really helpful and I'm really excited that we went through this tutorial together. I hope you enjoyed it and feel free to subscribe or find me on X or join the Discord. And I hope to connect with you and take care until next time. Bye.